political heat notwithstanding. Dr. Kanano commented that I enjoyed the read. Isabel, you are a great writer. I particularly linked myself to some of the characters in the book. I get Dixon Mutimba says, the book was worth my time and money. Then Eric Mwema Mudama commented, I saw that Jen Nanyango reviewed by saying that my favorite character is Uni. I want to be a Uni when I grow up. She did not deserve to die. Why did you kill her? Emily Otieno says, Bravo, excellent work. Looks like you have been writing forever. <coughs> then Tom Onyango reviewed by saying, I love them. I take away the one mark because I felt like you targeted me through the character of Uni. Ha ha ha. Dr. Ukute, University of Nairobi, the epilepsy story technique was above average. You are going places. Just give yourself some. So those are the reviews I received from people. And uh, let me comment on one, one here, which I found interesting. This is an extremely powerful story of a people's destiny, the political heat notwithstanding. A people's destiny in the sense that, you see, by lots of bullets, can I have a, a copy? On the cover, we have these two ladies. So running away from violence, they didn't know that actually anything would come out of it. So after their three year stay in Ghana, the lady has achieved a master's degree. Hmm? She, she comes back with the man as a couple. You see, they have, it is a love story, a story of a person's destiny. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. Uh, about the reviews, I'm also excited. So I killed Uni because, as I told you, it was as a form of punishment. We are not supposed to revenge as human beings. So supposing Uni was to stay with Mike and maybe, you see when she passes on, Mike remains with their adopted son, Jaden. Mike makes sure that Jaden is taken care of and Jaden goes to school. Isn't that a, a, a good thing about Mike? No, no, you're talking. Okay, <laughs> and it's enough for us to get the book and go and read the review, or we just go straight to the pen cutting. We have not okay. read the book. It's a beautiful love story. Mm -hmm. And this is a story of concern for me here, mm -hmm. because uh, we have seen what is happening in Kenya, or what has happened in Kenya or any other country. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, this political tension affects our relationship is so strong, yes. especially uh, when we come to Lovely. Mm -hmm. They describe what can't really get specifically described. Yes. I don't know how this book uh, articulated this issue. Mm -hmm. Because um, as for me, I don't think we should really, really, really dwell on the regalistic issues. That, uh, they go to Ghana, for example, mm -hmm. that's already getting out of the mess. Yeah. So, um, in as much as they live, they they stay in Ghana for three years mm. and come back to Kenya. Mm. And at the end of the day, uh, uh, they have an organization mm. that brings people together okay. and ensures that they talk to those ones who are emotionally and physically assaulted to ensure that there is healing and they, they are also uh, preachers of peace in the whole country. Okay. So that is how we get to unite them. Of course, they were fleeing the country because they were maybe, they, I can't say that they were on the, on the same political side because one of them was non-partisan considering his position as the ICT manager. But you see, he was murdered because somebody wanted a position, a given position by force. So I am not sure whether this one character was partisan or not, but you see, when they come back to the country, they are one thing, they unite pe people. And at the beginning of my book, I you see, I began this uh, in, term, in form of a flashback. We have a book launch party. In this book launch party, people who attend the party are the people who supported both sides of the, of the political, political divides, eh? both sides. So they are here, they are talking about how issues were and they are working as a family. And in the book launch, there is a... a Africa. Africa. 
many have done so and they stay, they have been exiled more or less forever. Peeling mm -hmm. back the mask by yeah. Nguna Nguna was an issue. Mm -hmm. uh, Ngugi's many, many texts have been an issue and he has been out of Kenya for quite some good time. Yes. Chimamana goes and he stays in the US. Mm -hmm. She doesn't stay in Nigeria. Because he exposed the, the, the rot that came with the beer from home. This book. Oh. Chami, is this woman? You? No. <laughs> <laughs> I am Isabella Mulama. <laughs> that is my, my pet name. So, fiction. So, yeah, that right. maybe explains why. Uh -huh. So, Chami is considered courageous because he takes this bold step of telling Fenuko. I have known you for three years. You're also a strong woman. You know you like that. Yes, thank so, you. Uh, maybe you knew that is where you had to give this lady that you <laughs> But, <laughs> but uh, I, I have not done that. But, really? What, what I'm going to say. <laughs> and, uh, for sure, we have a lot. Everyone has a story, like she said. Mm -hmm. But now, putting it down, Ama in Britain, it is difficult. Some of us can really do it verbally. Some of us can do it in Britain. So she has, uh, she has, she has stepped out. So it is a uh, men support us. But we can't be like, this is the next program, the cutting. So our lecturer, the one she quoted, Dr. Pesero tonight, used to tell us uh, any book you have three books from the same. He mentioned that, that every book you write every fictional work you present to the world must begin by a conflict. Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah. Yes. So paragraph in the first chapter. It is a eulogy. To my dear wife, friend and confidant, the mother to our beloved children, and into a sea of darkness. You say there is trouble there. There is a, somebody here who is so disturbed emotionally. Is he going to survive this emotional torture? From the day you died, my life, my life has turned into a sea of darkness. There is no real control. At its, its best, it feels like a mere procession of days with other colors washed out. And at its worst, it's a living nightmare in which I feel like I am going a little mad without you and the knowledge that you there is the main character of this book who is emotionally tortured. By the time this novel ends, have I solved that problem? Is this man emotionally stable? And the answer to this question is That is not a celebration. We are celebrating our sister here, and uh, for sure, we need to eat something sweet, something sweet to celebrate us, you know, uh, as a symbol of unity, as a symbol of love, as a symbol of greater things to happen in our lives and in our lives, you know. So that is why this cake is here. Uh, it is sweet, it doesn't have salt, it has sugar, and sugar is sweet. So, uh, Tabi, we are wishing you all the best. And uh, because of this cake here, as we are going to eat it, we want you to make so many other books that will save so many other lives and that will make our lives sweeter this while we are moving on. And now, uh, my, my sister's uh, Lillian and 
Helen, are going to take us through Kathy and Mary. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Mary. So, as you can see, the sweet is just as sweet as this at the Casselbre. As we enjoy the sweet, uh, the sweet cake. Uh, so, we are going to sing, eh? Mm -hmm. Maybe I will receive 10, 11, 12, or 15. But you see, this is a good number, and you have really humbled me. I didn't, I didn't invite everyone, considering the space and the logistics. 
I really want to thank you so much for coming. You have made this event a success and having had this, we are going to have the certificate of uh, launch which will help me in very many places. And that is why this occasion was very, very necessary. Thank you very much. After you eat cake, I'm giving you some five minutes for eating cake. Then we shall welcome John Paul for a general vote of thanks and a closing prayer. Be here today. Uh, when you sent me uh, the program yesterday and I saw you had uh, slotted me somewhere, I told myself I must come. And uh, by the grace of God, uh, we are all here today. And so uh, we thank you first of all for inviting us and uh, we thank God for the knowledge uh, he put in you for you to be able to, to give us this information, this beautiful story that uh, we are launching here today and uh, I thank all of you for accepting the invitation uh, to be here uh, to support our sister as uh, she launches her book. Uh, my prayer will be that uh, this book should be a, a source of inspiration to many. As uh, you are speaking today, I have been inspired. You know, you talked about putting down uh, our stories. Uh, they say somewhere that if you want to hide information from uh, Africans, you hide it in a, in a book. Uh, I hope you have uh, you've not hidden something there. But uh, it's an inspiration for us to read and also write. Uh, personally, I've journeyed with people who have been uh, through uh, election violence. And uh, I, I hope after reading your book, I've not read, let me confess, I, I'll, I'll get information necessary for me to to be able to perform better in, in my duties where, wherever I am. And so you've asked me to, to pray and I want to invite you all to stand up and... Uh... God our loving Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the gift of life and knowledge. We thank you for the special gift that you've given us, the special gift of our sister Isabel. We thank you for the knowledge you put in her for all that she has been through writing this book, for the joys and sorrows, for the ups and downs. Lord God, we thank you because today we are here by your graces and mercy as we launch this book. We pray, God, that this book, as we launch it today, will be an inspiration to many. We'll guide many into knowing you better and even performing their duties better. That whatever is written there might be an inspiration and might bring the glory of God on this earth. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So it's my answer. Okay. I'm happy you're here. My name is Isabella Mulama. I am an I am an author. Apart from writing, I am a teacher. I have a an undergraduate degree in English literature that is education and a master's degree in comparative literature and currently I am a PhD student and uh, I believe my educational journey motivated me into writing my book by lots of bullets because uh, when you are uh, in the line of literature, literature is about writing, literature is about how you view the world, literature is about everything that happens around you. So when you are in the field of literature and you do not write, you are wasting yourself and you are wasting generations after you. 
So what? Uh, uh, okay. Well, tell us basically today what was the, the event all about? Okay. The the to, today's event was uh, a book launch. Book launch usually happens for two reasons. Number one, to make the book public, and number two, to help you have the launch certificate. Your book can only go international, sell on the international market if you have the launch certificate. So it is one thing to write and it is another thing to organize for a book launch to sell your book internationally. Not necessarily to those people who are around, but internationally and to make it public and also to publish yourself as an author. So yes. what is the book all about and what inspired you to write? Okay, Ballots of Bullets is about the 2007 post-election violence in a fictional way. But being a historical fiction, actually we captured real names of people, real names of places, because a, a historical fiction must keep a people's history, must keep what happened at a particular time in a particular setting. So the setting of this book is Kenya. So actually what motivated me to write this book is that uh, during the 2007 post-election violence, in a way or another, I was directly affected because I had a friend who lost a mother through the violence and as such it affected her and it affected me. She, re she relocated, went to stay in the US and uh, even though it's been uh, close to a decade, she's still never been able to move on. She's still psychologically tortured because of the events that uh, led to her fleeing. So in as much as she's, she's in the US, you see, she's still not emotional emotionally stable and that is actually what happened to most of us who were there during that time. So because she was so close to me, I was motivated to write. This is one of the reasons that motivated me to write about post-election violence. In as much as I've been writing about other things but not violence, I can attribute this book, the starting point of this book as that particular case. Mm. How many books have you written? Okay, this is the first fictional book, but uh, in my profession as a uh, literary scholar, I have written uh, several academic papers and I have also contributed to an anthology of short stories. My, the title of my story is uh, The Assassin's Torture, which is yet to come out. Okay, in a week's time it will be ready. Mm. So I was motivated to write because the, the story because after writing Ballots of Bullets, I was called by my, by my publisher. He told me we have read very many stories, we have reviewed very many books, but it happens yours stands out. So we are going to include you in our voting process and uh, if you come out the best, we shall award you with a certificate. So I was given that certificate and to that effect I was considered among the top three personnel for in the publishing company that will edit our anthology of the short stories. Mm. What, what message do you have for young writers? For young writers, the only message I can tell them is that everybody can write. And for, for, for fiction, you don't have to worry who will criticize your work, who will say it is not right, because that is entirely your work. And every time you're writing, you're putting down something for the future generation, because it is only through writing that we preserve history. So the only thing I can have for the young writers in Kenya is that let us put down our history through writing your gen genre of choice notwithstanding you can do poetry you can do short stories you can write plays and uh, you can also write a novel as well it is very much possible what specific challenges do uh, writers in Kenya face and maybe you call to the government uh-huh there is one big challenge before your manuscript is accepted by a publisher, before you get your work published, usually you have to go through a million reviews and it is not a, a, a very easy thing to have your work published. 
Then another thing, we have this mentality of those authors who have been in Kenya, like Ngugi Wathiongo, uh, those ones who've been writing for years. There is a very big challenge to have you as a young author acceptable on the market. So it takes a lot of effort for you to have your work accepted. Like mine, I can say maybe it, beca it is because I am in the field of literature that I have been accepted quite easily, but for other people it may not be easy. So every time you want to sell your work, people ask you, what do you do for a living? And the moment they realize that you're doing something else out of literature and you have a work written as a literary text, they don't, they don't believe in your work. So that is the challenge that I, I have seen my friends go through, having your work acceptable in the world as a young writer. You have to do a lot about it. So what is your call to the government? My? Your call to the government. My call to the government, maybe if they helped us. Like uh, countries like uh, Nigeria, Ghana, Gambia, Senegal, we have uh, very book, uh, very big book, book, sorry, book clubs initiated by the government itself. So you can ha you can present your work, have your work critiqued by African writers in your own country, have your work judged, not uh, letting the publishers be the judges of your own work. When uh, some of the publishers do not even understand what literature is all about, they are so much concerned about grammatical errors, the form, the, the way you present the work, the themes you handle, but they do not know what actually writing and the literary text should be all about. Mm. Okay, with the, with the, now it's actually a digital era. Are yes. Are expecting these uh, books uh, mm. online? Yes, mm -hmm. it is there. Yeah. I, I have already shared the link mm -hmm. and uh, it, I think it is behind that book. Mm. The book is already online. It is on an international market. I can share the link with you even after this so that you can check it out. Mm. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay. My name is Harriet Kisali. I'm a friend to Isabel Tabi. And uh, I happened to attend the, the launch, the book launch that is called the book is called Bal from Ballots 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 of Bullets. And uh, for sure from the launch uh, I was so excited because uh, she was able to uh, articulate a lot of issues that are written in that book and especially uh, about what politics and elections does to the people around. So uh, it is a very encouraging book, as much as I've not read it, but uh, from the reviews, I can attest that uh, it's a book that is worth reading. And it is going to help a lot of people in this generation and the generation to come. Yeah, it is, it is, it is inspiring. Yeah. So w w what what do you tell the, the generation actually? Because uh, many many of them don't like reading. Many of them don't like reading, especially hard books. Mm -hmm. But now she has told us that the book is also online. It is not a must that they should take a book and read it at, read it at once. They could even just visit that link and read a chapter, at least one chapter. And for sure, uh, from reading a chapter, you'll be energized to read uh, the next chapter. And they should just embrace that culture of reading because we get knowledge from books and so there is no escape. Mm -hmm. My name is Hilda and I've attended the book launch Ballots of Bullets. I can say that uh, I've read a few chapters in the book and the book is good. It's uh, educatable to young leaders and uh, youth who are aspiring to be leaders in the future. We should know that after politics, after political uh, activities, there is life after it. And therefore we should uh, entrust our life and know that we have to move on. Political violence is a, a disaster that is a, not easy to capture and uh, not easy to come after because lives are lost, people lose their loved ones and uh, we live with uh, grief the rest of our life. The book is okay. She has said she has gone through challenges and the challenges are there but uh, young readers should be willing to follow and do what is right in regard to political errors. Okay, my name is Kesio Kipchumba. 
I happen to have schooled with the author of Ballots of Bullets, Isabella Mulama. We were together in Masinde Mulero University and this somebody I have known, I knew her for the four years we were in campus together. I didn't attend the, the book launch, I came in, I, ca I came later, but I, I wish that I would have attended the book launch. I'm going to read the ballot of bullets after this one, and I think it is going to address, it is addressing actually the violence that is uh, punctuating the Kenyan elections every now and then. Now my call to the, the, to the generation who don't like uh, reading nowadays, we have a very, a lot of uh, students we teach today and the generation that we are in together in this generation, they don't like reading books. I would want to appeal to them to have that positive reading culture of books. We could start a book club, kind of, whereby we encourage them to read the books. Now to Isabella Mulama, she actually, this is a person that I've known, and I would want to encourage her to, this one would not to be the first book, but actually to be writing a lot of them. We have established names like uh, Ngugi Wathiongo, uh, Chinua Achebe, who actually passed on. Those are the, the people who have actually been dominating the literary world for quite some time. So with the coming of uh, young authors like Isabella, it is actually encouraging to some of us that we want to start our career in writing. Thank Thank mm -hmm. you. 